Good afternoon. What a great day. And you know what? 2010 is going to be a great year. And I think that we will remember it as the year of the hokey pokey. And I'll tell you why because we're going to put the right ones in and take the left ones out. We do, we do the hokey pokey and Obamacare's out. And that's what it's all about. So, um, having said that, I'm really up here to make an introduction, but while I have the mic, I'd like to make uh, just a few statements, actually brag on AFP Virginia. So I brought some notes because there's a lot that they have accomplished, but I'll go quick. About two years ago, I um, had an, an understanding that there was going to be a vacancy for the state director of AFP Virginia. And as Ben just said, he and I got to know each other when he worked on my campaign. And so I knew what a great activist he was, what an energized fellow he was. I called Tim Phillips. I don't know where's Tim, I can't see you in the lights, but I don't know if he remembers this. I twisted his arm for about 30 minutes. You gotta hire Ben. And he did. And I am so glad because Ben is doing such a fantastic job of getting the message out in Virginia. And um, with your help, he'll continue to get that message out. Let's just give Ben a big hand. So many things AFP has done in Virginia. A grassroots army descended on the Capitol last year to cut the, the cane or no cane tax. Um, Americans for Prosperity for two years in a row now. The first um, Defending the American Dream Gala was held in Richmond, and then there was a Defending the American Dream Gala in Washington. How many of you went? It was a great time. They made huge gains against card check, taking out turning out activists all over Virginia. They had an unprecedented amount of town hall meetings across Virginia. I attended several of those and spoke. Well, many of you came out to tell the government what we think, and it's high time they listen to what we think. Cap and trade. They have been out educating the people on cap and trade. And I don't know if you know it, but I heard through the grapevine that on Earth Day this year, there's going to be a campaign for all of us to hold our breath all day. They've been in the health care debate and educating, again, voters about the dangers of Obamacare. And those are the type of things that Americans for Prosperity has done. But one thing they've done and that we can continue to do is grow our numbers. I heard Tim say that, or Ben say, we're up to 900,000 members. Let's go to a million this year. Let's go to a million. Bring out your friends and family and tell them what Americans for Prosperity is all about and let's grow this membership and let Virginia lead the way. Right now, and actually I said I was here to make a, an introduction, and so I'll do that now. The gentleman I'm about to introduce was elected to the Virginia State Senate for the 26th District in 2003. In the Senate, he serves on four committees, courts of justice, local government, agriculture, conservation, and natural resources, and privileges and elections. He was raised in a household in which politics was the most frequent topic for dinner table conversations. His father, Richard, is regarded by many as the chief architect of modern Republican Party in Virginia. Politics is in his DNA. The same can be said of his sister, Kate, who many of you know as a commentator on my favorite channel, Fox News. He is a rising star in the Republican Party and a leader of the General Assembly Conservative Caucus. He could always be relied on to be on the right side of the Constitution and always firm in his stand for truth, justice, and the American way. A great supporter of AFP, capitalism, the free market, and the free enterprise system. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a great American, Senator Mark Obenshin. What a great day it is today. Is everybody excited about our team that was just sworn in today? I tell you what, they are three conservative 
principled, reform-minded Republicans who are going to stand up for what's right. And I tell you what, I saw a fellow back here, I'm afraid he just left, who has a Tenth Amendment t-shirt on. Now what do you think Ken Cuccinelli's views are about protecting the Tenth Amendment and protecting Virginia against <laughs> encroachment by the federal government during the next three years of the Obama administration? He's going to stand up for your rights and mine, and I'm excited about that and it helps to ease the pain of losing him in the state senate. It hurts. And uh, I want to say also that uh, Brenda Pogge and Suzanne Curran and frankly each one of you are, are real heroes to me. You all came up through this grassroots movement where it's not party that's important. The Republican Party does and it should stand for something. But we're here not because of the capital R. We're here because we believe in freedom. We believe in protecting and expanding, advancing the realm of economic and other freedoms in the life of this country. And that is our goal. And during the course of the past decade, I know it's been frustrating to many of us as we've seen candidates run for office, win election, and go and serve, and it doesn't take very long before some of them forget why they were elected. We have seen it over and over again. And as we go through this process of celebrating, I want to remind you of a few things. One is it is critical that we do not we cannot let that happen. We have to stand up for our principles. We've got to remember what's going on, not just in Washington, but have to remember what's going on across America. First, in Washington, you've heard speakers talk about it. We've got the Obamacare disaster working its way through Washington. And let me predict something. If the Democrats lose in Massachusetts on Tuesday, the Democrats who've been supporting the Obamacare are going to run like cockroaches in the bathroom when the lights turned on.